Rex Hudler, Joe Goldberg, Jeff Montgomery from Kauffman Stadium. Current temperature is 53 degrees, and we're scheduled to have a 215 first pitch. There's a look at Brian Dozier, who will lead things off. He is a power hitter who belted 42 home runs for the Twins last year. Then Kepler and Sano, who has nine RBIs in four games this year against Kansas City. Don't, don't let him beat you. Make sure you be careful where you've laid that ball in there when a hot guy like that. On the mound for the Royals is Jason Hamill looking for his first win. Hut. He is 0 and 2 with a 5.3 ERA and four starts. Okay, now is the day to step up. Get your team out of a funk and become a baton passer to the next starter. Start a streak today, and Hamill can do that if he can just hang in there and work him. Now this is his last start, April 6th against the Twins. His pitch breakdown. Fastball slider change up and curve curve very rarely his best pitch is his slider He'll use the fastball to set up that slider if he's on he's going to keep the ball down downhill Our forward around the horn defense for the Royals Escobar. We've got him highlighted. Why not 198th consecutive start? He's the Iron Man of today's game Brian Dozier takes first pitch upstairs for ball one Dozier 0 for 5 in the 6 4 Twins victory on Friday night. Brian smacks that one down the line, but foul. One ball, one strike. Dozier, got to be careful with him. Now they've done a, the Royals have done a nice job with him so far early in the season. He hasn't beat him with a home run, but he's a, he's a guy that's got some pop. So Hamble jumps ahead one ball and two strikes and is this the count where he likes to go with that slider. This is it right here especially when he gets two strikes on a batter and you know he doesn't necessarily have to throw it for a strike because the depth he can start it at the belt it looks good and then bury it down off the plate. And he does go with the slider but it misses low two balls two strikes. His twins offense hitting 236 as a team. Ninth in the American League run scored at 4.3. Told you last year, Dozier, he wore us out. He hit 11 home runs, 13 RBIs last season. And now, this season so far, they've really held him down. In there, strike three called. As Hamill was able to get that breaking ball over the inside corner and gets the first out of the game. Nice job on side of the ball like that starts belt high ends up down below the zone of course that wasn't below that stayed right there. Nice job by Salvador Perez framing it up for home plate umpire Manny Gonzalez. Jason last Sunday at Texas lost five to two facing Max Kepler. Kepler good power 278 two home runs and nine driven in this year. That last start against Texas, Jason allowed one run in the third and two in the fourth, but he thought he wasn't being aggressive enough. There's a strike across for a 2 1 count. He hit two batters and walked three through 84 pitches in just three innings. Up the middle, that will find center field. And Kepler is on. Our Kubota power stats against the Royals has been impressive. Four games versus Kansas City, almost hitting 500. He's got a double and a triple, a couple homers. The RBIs, the runs produced has been impressive. You just got to be careful where you put the ball on him. You can't make any mistakes. If you make a mistake and you hang one like Soria did, he's going to hurt you. you you're a hot hitter and he's confident. He's having a year this year. So far. Two for four on Friday with a double home run and four RBIs. Two run home run into the bullpen off of Kennedy. That was the only mistake that Ian made in his five and a third.
Kepler goes the pitch is taken and he will steal second base without a throw. Now it looked like home plate umpire Manny Gonzalez gave the foul ball. So you can see that Kepler is looking back the whole way so that was a, a design hit and run but it was up. Now watch home plate umpire. That's a foul ball sign he gave right there. So I'm not so sure what's going on with that if he ticked it or not. But maybe he got his hand signals wrong. So no waves at the next offering a good slider and it's 0 and 2. Okay, now usually that's right there means foul ball. Which means the runner at second base back. should go back to first. Right. But then I, I looked at second base umpire filled in Colbert, and he didn't say anything. Tell the runner to go back. Wow, good pitch there by Hamill, and he strikes out Miguel Sano, who had a weak swing at that off-speed pitch. That's exactly what you do. Be oh, careful. Fastball, excuse yeah, me. Yeah, be careful where you put that. It's on the outside corner. Keep it right there, and you know nothing in the middle. And you can see he was tardy. It's way late. Here is Joe Maurer. He had the big hit on Friday that broke the 4 4 tie. Right down that right field line that played in two. Joe, a veteran now 33 years of age, over 1,800 hits, 130 home runs in his career. Still looking for his first home run of this season. But we saw him last year hitting second a lot, but Paul Molitor moving him down to the cleanup spot a lot, even though he hasn't been their power hitter. Yeah, and he's not a huge run producer anymore this late in his career, but he likes those on base percentage guys to, to get. On base now, Vargas, Castro, the guys who are falling in Polanco, he's counting on them to knock in Maurer if he can get on with a walk or a knock. That's a good pitch coming on his hands because he loves to hit that ball to the opposite field. So far this year, the Twins are hitting 261 as a team with the runner in scoring position, and Maurer's hitting 286. Now it's just on the inner half there. You can see he, he, he beat him on it. Struck out Dozier on a slider, Sano on a fastball. Now we're tough to strike out. He has only struck out five times this year. Good block by Salvador. One out single by Kepler who then stole second base. Execute a pitch now. Either jam him in or keep it down for sure. Up the middle, right to Escobar. Big hop for him. And Hamill does a nice job in his first inning. When we come back, Whit Merrifield will lead things off. Then the power of Mike Mustakas, followed by Lorenzo Kane.
Stadium Twins and Royals with Merrifield will lead things off and we told you about Moose and Kane to follow and then Eric Hosmer beginning to pick things up seven hits in his last five games. That's a good sign and Salvi's power on Friday. Yep. Once the guys that are seeing the best uh, most pitches and having the best at bats at the top of that order to try to get on base and hopefully they'll can continue to improve on their hitters hitting with runners in scoring position. Phil Hughes three and one record despite an ERA near five so they're giving him run support. Yep. But you know what the key is. Be aggressive today. Forget about that. Now, you, you know, I know that's been a problem. The Royals swinging a lot of pitches out of the zone, but look, he's not going to walk anybody. He's only got four walks. He's going to give you some pitches to hit. Be ready to hit him. Well, he used to have a fastball around 95 miles an hour, but right at right, right now it's right around 89, 90, and he's dropped down sidearm occasionally. Yeah, you know he's creating ways to get outs, Fizz. That's the whole thing. When you get a little older and you've been around the league, it, pitchers need to make adjustments too, and that's what Phil's doing. He's doing a nice job of it. Home plate umpire Manny Gonzalez. He made the right call last inning when he gave the foul ball sign. Well. The, the ball was tipped into Salvi's glove and you're you're eligible and you're able to steal a base on a foul ball that's caught. Okay, now if he drops it you got to go back. That's the whole reason why he didn't go back because he caught the ball. And then Manny is the first Venezuelan born major league umpire in history. And I got to talk to Manny today about C.B. Bucknor who took a who took a foul tip in the jaw on Friday's game and went down and he's out. And I knocked on the door down there and he opened the door and I said how CB and he said man he's having concussion like symptoms he's having headaches still they're going to fly him back to Arizona and do some more checks check up on him. So our thoughts are with him and, and hopefully he'll he'll continue to recover but when he took that shot to the jaw dropped him like a prize fighter would go down to the canvas. I mean it was a, a tough shot and then Clint Fagan is the man who's filling in for him. Is at third base today. Gonzalez calling the balls and strikes. Fielding Colbreth is our crew chief at first, and Mark Carlson at second. In the air, right side, Kepler back. The wind today is crossing over right to left, coming out of the south southeast. Merrifield, good stroke, man. He's got real nice opposite field swing now. Minnesota Twins defense, you wonder why Jorge Polanco is taking off with that job at shortstop? Because look, he saved four runs for the for the uh, pitchers. Now that's been good. It's the best among American League shortstops. You know they've had other shortstops there, Pedro Florimone, and they've had Danny Salazar, or excuse me, Santana. They've had some some shortstops there in the last few years, trying to find an everyday guy. And this kid's taken over, mainly of his glove. Just missed that. Moose going after the first pitch, pops it up on the infield. Dozier, two out. Our Toyota League leaders are about the guy who is approaching home plate right now, Lorenzo Kane, who's been one of the American League's very best in hitting at home. Jose Ramirez of Cleveland hitting 475 this year, then Kane at 424. Lorenzo went one for four on Friday, the Royals' 6 4 loss. His single in the fifth inning ended an 0 for 15 slide he'd been on. Get strike one. After the, the, the hitter before you swings the first pitch and makes it out, it's good that you don't swing the next time up at the first pitch. Now that's a ball that he could have handled. So you, know, you don't want to give him back back, back to about outs. He's only thrown nine pitches to get his first two outs. Last Saturday. Hughes beat Texas three to two gave up two runs in six innings. Another opposite field fly ball. And it will be Kepler in foul territory and easy inning for Hughes. We head to the second. Still looking for our first run.
You can join us for our annual school day at the Cape presented by Price Chopper and hosted by the Fox 4 weather team. Students and teachers alike will have a blast learning about Kansas City weather while catching the Royals in action on the field. This year's event will begin prior to the game this Thursday with the presentation starting at 10 in the morning. Then get to your seats and enjoy the game as the Royals take on the White Sox at 115. Go to Royals.com slash school day to learn more. Kenny Vargas the designated hitter this afternoon. Robbie Grossman got the start on Friday and Vargas another Miguel Sano like player at six feet five and two hundred seventy pounds. They've got a pretty good offensive line for football. You sure do. Neither one of them were drafted this week by the NFL. Here's Gordon coming in quickly and makes a basket catch. Now there was no need for communication there as, as they the Royals infield was pulled over Escobar was over Moose was the only remaining defender on the left side but Moose and Gordon have played together look, watch them look at each other look at Alice look down he looks down he sees where he is they didn't have to say anything because Moose could tell he wasn't going to get it but Alex knew where he was and stayed away from the collision. Yeah that we all remember May 22nd last year when Alex collided with Mike and Alex missed six weeks and Moose gone for the year. Don't need that again. No, and you know, too, Fizz, uh, when you play together with a certain guy for a, a, a long length of time, like these guys have, you, you become to know one another, and you can all you need, need really is just to look at each other's positioning, and you know each other's speed, you know the aggressiveness of Alex in the outfield, and that was a doinker they didn't need to give up. It was a good catch. Now Jason Castro, 29-year-old lefty hitter. Twins signed him to a three-year deal from the Houston Astros. He had a very good series when they swept the Royals in Minnesota. Swings and misses here. Advantage Hamill at one and two. I'll say Castro, man, he he looked like a whole different player in that the first three games of the season. And he walked. He hit 500. Went three for six. He had. He had six walks in that three game series. Way high with the fastball. He has 11 walks on the season. Oh, didn't miss by much. Out back. You know, and Castro, he, he's in his seventh year now, and after six years, you can become a free agent. And really, that's that's good for him. He got him a three-year deal the first year he's eligible to become a free agent. But you know, he's had with Houston in four years, he's had home runs years of 18, 14, 11, 11. So he's he's almost guaranteed you double digits in homers, and and he continues to improve behind that plate, calling si signals. In there. Yeah. Strike three called. Three strikeouts on the day for Jason Hamill. Yeah. Second one looking. And there it was a beauty now. He's hoping that this ain't thrown for a strike, but that was. Slider didn't didn't break all the way down, but Castro, you got to go. Upper part of the zone. Since that first start against Minnesota, Jason throwing that slider more. And there's a fastball that grazes the outside corner. Polanco 0 for 4 on Friday, batting average at 243. He is a natural second baseman. They've moved to short because they still have Dozier. Well, here's a guy that you want to get in there and pitch to. He's not been swinging the bat. Last seven games hitting just 154. Go ahead and pitch to him. He's a young guy. He hasn't gotten a full season in the majors yet. Last year hit 282. Drove in 27. Time called. He's made appearances in the majors, you know, in 2014, 15, and 16. Oh, yeah, he went. 
But you know, Fizz, I, I look at service time. You know, I look at how much time he has in actually service time. I know the media looks at maybe the last, you know, two, three years since 14 that he's been, they might say he's got three years in the majors. How many games? He's played in 69 games. And that's before this season. Mm -hmm. But that tells me a lot about the player. First, when a new team comes to town and we get the, the readout on them, I see, I'm going to look and see how much time they have. That tells me a lot. How many at bats they've had, particularly yeah. in the minor leagues as well? well. I'll, I'll check that, but, but I want to know how, their service time, if they're young or if they're old. You know, guys that have seven, eight, nine years, those are the money players. Base hit by Polanco. So you got back in the count there. Arkea in the driver's seat. Eddie Rosario has been one of the Twins' hottest hitters last 10 games. He has hit in all of them and is 15 for 38, including a couple of home runs. He had a very good 2015 season, and scouts told us, check out his hands. I mean, they are quick hands, strong hands. Not a big guy, but the ball seems to jump off his bat. Strike one. Paul Molitor in his second year of the skipper of the Twins thinks that Rosario has a chance to be a very nice ball player. I mean he he, he does a lot of little things well. He's a good bunner. He's got some pop in his bat and he, he he's much improved in the outfield. He likes it. Yeah their outfield can be together for years. I mean Rosario is only 25. Max Kepler is 24 and Byron Buxton the center fielder is only 23. But the only thing that he he wants to see Rosario improve in and that is his confidence. When you're struggling keep your head up. Don't get down. He's hard on himself. Sometimes when you beat yourself up like that it's hard to come out of a funk. Hamels 0 2 bounces in the dirt Salvi gets to it but good re by. Polanco now he's in scoring position with two out. Wild pitch. Hamill was rather wild in that last start at Texas. We told you about the 84 pitches, but he hit a couple of batters, walked three. And you can see by that graphic there with two strikes, he's having trouble putting hitters away. He was so good at that last year. 15 game winner. You know it's interesting Fizz how, how you know we, you can't live in the past. OK you have to in baseball it's now but it's easy to look back. Take for example I'm we're in Ned I'm in Ned's office this morning Ned Yost and he's got some great stuff on his walls and on one of his uh, one of the nice posters he had there was a little little uh, square that said first manager in the history of baseball to to go eight no in the playoffs. Eight straight wins. First one in the history. And, I, and I, I looked at that. I pointed to Ned. I go, Ned, look at that. Man, that's pretty cool. And he looked at me and says, HUD, that's in the past. Said, that was yeah. 2014 after yeah. the Royals won that amazing wild card game and then zipped through the Angels and the Orioles to but get to the first World Series since 1985. He didn't want to let me give him a compliment. He wants you to stop by the office after the game and say congratulations on the victory. No, he doesn't want me coming in his <laughs> office. He doesn't. But he has a great office. Rosario swings and misses at the slider and strikes out. Four K's for Hamill. When we come back, we'll see the guy who homered on Friday, Salvador Perez.
control pitchers in the game. And as we take a look at the Academy leaderboards, fewest walks per nine innings since 2014. Phil Hughes, number one at 0 0.99. And that's in a minimum of 60 starts. He had that brilliant 2014 season with only 16 walks and 186 strikeouts. His 11.6 strikeout to walk ratio was the best in modern Major League history. And Eric Hosmer goes after the first pitch, pops it up, and they have miscommunication as the shortstop, center fielder, and the left fielder all converge, and Hosmer gets a pop single. Well, I'm not going to fault anyone for this play here. That was just well placed. I mean, right there, you can see the shortstop's having problem. Buxton is too far for him to come in there, and if the shortstop can't get it, that means your luck is changing. How many line drives have Hawes hit at people this year? Oh, I could tell you at least two handfuls. So look, he'll take it. Leadoff man is on. Now Hughes will be pitching from the stretch, facing Salvador Perez, six home runs this year. Takes a first pitch breaking ball in there for strike one. So today, with Phil Hughes, and we just showed you how what a what a strike thrower he is. I know you're not going to hear me critiquing any hitters for being too aggressive. Go after him. He's pitching Sal upstairs and Hughes more of a fly ball pitcher. His team has turned one double play behind him this year. And how nice the sun is out just at the right time here at the K and that wind. Woo hoo man if Salvi can get one up. Get one in that in that gate that, that that gale right there. Although he didn't really need the wind. Two one count. Now what we we found out about Hughes, Phil Hughes is he's not really happy when runners get on base. This season, the numbers haven't been for him with runners on and in risk. Risk meaning runners in scoring position. He cracks this one in the gap. Buxton won't reach. Hosmer around second base. Mike Jershley's going to send him home. And Eric Hosmer will give the Royals the early 1 0 lead. When Salvador Perez waits till the ball travels deep to the catcher's glove and uses the opposite field, he is as good as it comes. Now he's got pull power, we all know it, but when he has the ability to wait on a pitch that's not just outside, that's like a foot off the plate there, or half a foot off the plate. He has great extension, his arms are long, and he's able to go out there and barrel that and hit it right where it's pitched and right where they ain't. Look at that. That's called splitting the gap. Haas is on his horse, hitting the inside part of the base is proper. Watch him, right there. Inside part of the base, never breaks stride. No problem, one nothing. See if they can hold it. Now Alex Gordon and he'll pop it foul strike one. Ah, still huffing and puffing. It's a long ways. Fizz. Yeah. I know Joel's got a story about Eric and the work he did. Along with Danny Duffy yesterday. Single and a double to start the bottom of the second inning. Ball one strike. Gordon 0 for 3 on Friday and just 5 for his last 31 to see his average drop to 181. It's a guy here that can utilize the opposite field and make him much better. And they're going to keep pounding him inside. There you go. That's the right swing right there. Now you saw Haas in that dugout huffing and puffing, but really that's that's like a 90. Yard run on the football field. That's a long run. Alex knows all about that. He was a great wide receiver at Lincoln Southeast High School. Nick Baugh was his quarterback. That swing he took before that was the one he wants, even though they continue to pound him in. He's got to find left field. It's going to help him see the ball longer. It's going to help him, you know, get his his average back where he needs to be. Did you know Alex still holds? The Nebraska high school record for the longest 
touchdown pass in state history, 99 yards. What? Yes, Nick Baugh to Alex Gordon. Nick tells the story where I just went back in the end zone, threw it as far as I could. Alex leaped up, made a great catch, broke a couple of tackles and ran in, and then I told Gordon about it, and Alex goes, no big deal. She caught the ball and ran in. <laughs> He's a beauty. He's as humble a ball player as there is. Sure would like to see him be a little bit more productive, and that would make him happier. Now, he's got good numbers off of, off of Hughes. Well, I like his approach. I was watching batting practice on Friday when we were out here, and he was almost jamming himself, hitting the ball to left field, doing all he could to go to left. So he's trying to make the adjustment. Held off. So a good battle here after Hughes had a very quick and easy one two three inning and didn't have to throw many pitches. Mm. That wind picking up probably twenty five thirty miles an hour. Going to left field. And there's a base hit to left center. Salvi had a hold for a second. They will hold him at third, and Alex comes through with a base hit. That's what we're talking about. Right there. If Salvi hadn't went back to second, he would have played him in a heartbeat. But with nobody out there, that ball moved away. Alex right on. Short and compact is that swing. There you go. Salvi had to protect with nobody out. You can't get doubled up on the line drive. So Salvi did the right thing by going back. Now the Royals. Nobody out first and third the Bonifacio or Moss have got to score that run in third maybe more. Middle infield playing back. They'll give up a run to get two outs. Salvi still wants to get a good secondary lead at third. Bonifacio one for three on Friday. Ball one. Bonifacio is not going to get tricked very often because his hands are so quick and his eyes are excellent to tell his hands what to do and he controls his lower body by taking a very short step. It's not even a step. He just picks up his foot and sets it down and that controls the whole body head stays back hands are ready to fire. He's going to put the ball in play hits it wherever it's pitched. One ball one strike. Just 23 years old, getting stronger, hit 19 home runs, was Omaha's player of the year last year, also driving an 86. Got off to a great start this year at Omaha. And when Paulo Orlando struggled a bit, Paulo sent out, Bonifacio called up. Hoping for a big inning. Just did get the change up off the end of the bat. Hughes with 13 strikeouts this year in 22 innings. That mean, means he's a little bit more of a contact pitcher now. He's not going to blow it by you. Like he did maybe in his younger days when he was a Yankee and he's a lot stronger fastball. This time he zips that fastball after throwing the changeup to Bonifacio and strikes him out. So let's check in with Joel and Joel. The fielder looks really good. Yeah, no surprise with as good as this grounds crew is. I talked to head groundskeeper Trevor Vance around the stadium. They actually lost three trees last night that snapped parking lot A, parking lot H, and by the players parking lot. But you'd never know it. 2.89 inches of rain here on the field yesterday, but it's good to go. It looks great. And in anticipation of bad weather while the Royals were on the road trip, the grounds crew did some aerating 
right beyond where you would have the tarp. So down the shallow left, shallow right field, just to help encourage some of that drainage, make it more efficient. So they're able to drain it quickly, ready to go. You'd never know that these storms came last night, at least not looking at Kauffman Stadium. Well, almost three inches of rain, and it looks gorgeous. The guys did a great job preparing it as it was misting all morning long, and finally they pulled the tarp about, what was it, about 1.30? Well, here's Brandon Moss. He has hit home runs in back-to-back -back games. Got to come through here, get one airborne. Oh, and two. Royals had a single and a double to open the inning, and then Gordon shot a single to left field, and Perez held up at third. But Bonifacio struck out, and now Brandon down in the count 0 2. Hard to ask a home run hitter to shorten up his swing. But you know what? In a situation like this, 0 and 2, I mean, just do anything you can to get the run home. And he is 5 for 19 with one homer in his career off of Hughes. See that big hole? It's a big hole here. Now he's a pull hitter for sure. As you can see, the shortstop Polanco playing on the second base side over there. But if you see anything middle in, just take a take a swat at it. And he dumps one to left field, and it will drop. And Perez is going to score, and the Royals have taken a two nothing lead. Exactly yes. what we're talking about. That's what you want to do with two strikes. Great job. Look at that fan right there. He's happy. He's saying, all right, Moss shortened up his swing. He put the ball in play. That's what we're talking about. Just, just, just do the little things. Yeah, a little change up. See, he kept his head down. It looks like he split his fingers some on that pitch. And it stayed up. Now with runners first and second with one out. Now Cedis Escobar, who's been, as Ned Yo said, a little over aggressive. Oh, he's only seen 17 pitches his last eight at bats. And he's been swinging at pitches that have not been strikes. Hasn't been a good start for Escobar. The Royals, they play better baseball, at least this year hit at home here. It's a huge park. And really, it's a ballpark made just for Escobar's style of hitting. Not for what he's been trying to do. He's been trying to hit homers. Center field, it will stay up for Buxton. And more fly balls this year from Escobar than ground balls. And usually he stays on top and through that baseball. Talking to himself as he comes back to the dugout. It's a matter of time until he gets himself together. Merrifield fly it out to right field first time up. You have Gordon at second, Moss at first. The Royals have scored two in the second. Strike one. Shared it before. This inning here has been a doinker type inning, which is good. It's not how hard you hit it, it's where you hit it. Hosmer, you want to think the luck is changing? It is. You know what the hit speed was on his doinker? 76 miles per hour. Moss, uh, it's not going to do anything unless he loses the sun. Oh, oh man, nice he recovery. battled it and tumbles to the ground but makes the catch. Oh, that is fortunate. Anyway, Moss's hit was 65. That's it. Crooked number in an inning. That's beautiful.
Join us next Sunday versus the Indians for salute to the Negro Leagues. The first 15,000 fans through the gates will receive a Monarchs jersey presented by Fox Sports Kansas City. Make sure to come to the K wearing your Sunday best to honor the tradition of attending Negro League games dressed to the nines. Visit Royals.com slash NLBM for tickets. Hamill facing number nine batter Byron Buxton. He got that key walk in the four run eighth inning on Friday. Only a 138 batting average and one for 17 against Kansas City in his first three games with eight strikeouts and Hamill has a 2 1 count. But Byron for a long time has one of been one of baseball's top prospects mainly because of his athleticism great speed. You know what's so good about speed Fizz? it never goes into a slump. But you can't steal first base. Nope. Can't do that, but you know what? You can be, you can get on first base a lot easier than a lot of one-dimensional power hitters. A little topper on the infield, a little bunt here, your base hit. That's one thing Molitor, I'm sure, would like Buxton to do more of, especially he's down in that order, essentially being a another leadoff man in that nine hole is Buntmore. Well, he walks for just the ninth time this year. That's His not last what, two have been big ones against Kansas City. But you don't want to give him a free ride. He can steal a base on you. And Hamill does not hold runners as well as, say, Duffy or Vargas or Ian Kennedy. Buxton two for two on steals this year. And that ball is struck pretty well to left field. Gordon, though, right there and makes the catch. There's one out. Refreshing saves from Price Chopper and Aquafina. Sign up at mypricechopper.com to save on Aquafina when the Royals get a save. Retying his shoe. Now he'll face Max Kepler, who singled it to center field his first time up. Hamill, good athlete. He's got quick feet. Using exactly what a pitcher needs to do against a base stealer is hold the ball. The longer you hold it, the more it freezes up the runner from getting a good start. And then vary your times, like hold it for maybe three seconds. The next time, come set and go home. That's how you keep him from not getting a good jump. Yeah, you know, when Kepler stole second base in the first inning, he went with a high leg kick that time, rather quick home. They throw over again. Buxton's two for two in steals. Buxton goes, pitch taken, throw by Salvi. Not in time. Nice try by Eski. That's a, a, a good low throw by Salvi. You want a ball down, you'd rather have it down than up. But look, watch Eski. He's going to catch it and put the tag right on him. I mean, just a split second too late. 
good read on the pick and drop it right down there. And keep it on him in case it comes off. Third steal by Buxton. Kepler now has a favorable three and one count. You yeah, know man. when you excuse me when you're when you're getting ready to catch a ball from uh, on a steal attempt you want to have your knees bent you want to bend your knees and get down there and, and, and anticipate a, a low throw or a bad hop and that way you start low and you can always come up high but if you start up high standing straight with your knees straight you're going to miss it it's going to go down it's going to go by you. Ooh. There is ball four and looked like uh, Salvi may have been crossed up a little bit expecting uh, something else yeah. the way he cradled that ball into his glove. Oh, no question. And that was a big save by Salvi there. If this ball gets by him now let's watch Escobar again. Look at his knees. See his knees being bent. He's got good bend in his knees. He's right here. He's staying down and he's going to take that ball directly to the target. That's what you want to do. Don't sweep you know to tag catch it and go straight down north and south. That's the quickest way to get him. But that save that Salvi did there, man, that, that saved Buxkin going to third base. Less than two outs. Sano with a high drive to left. Ah, Gordon strong. back. And it is gone. And the Twins go from two down to one up. Miguel Sano continues to crush Kansas City pitching. That's now 12 RBIs in five games this year. What you want to do after your team scores two runs is to come right back and, and shut them down but you can't do it on an inside pitch at 91 right there to a powerful hitter and he's so strong. I mean he could he could hit this even higher and it would have still went out of the ballpark. Keeps both hands on the bat. Full extension and. Let him right back in it. Well the walks led to the big inning. And. Uh, the Twins lead the American League in walks. They lead the major leagues in walks now with 100. And 27, I believe, of those have scored. Sano continues to carry the team. And he's got big enough shoulders he can do it. But if, if you don't walk, when you get to him, you can pitch around him. I agree. You know. Fastball command. We said it before the game. It's important for Hamill to get out there, try to get ahead of guys, throw them strikes, and then finish them off with a slider. But sometimes easier said than done. Last year, the thorn in the Royals' side was Brian Dozier with 11 home runs. This year, it is Miguel Sano. Falling behind Maurer. Third walk in the inning for Jason. And Dave Island will jog out for a visit to try and get Jason right. RBI baseball 2017 returns with fast paced pick up and play MLB action on consoles and mobile RBI baseball is packed with your favorite teams players ballparks and more. Learn more at RBI game dot com and get RBI baseball today for Xbox one and PlayStation four. Royals took a 2 nothing lead in the second. But the Twins with a three run home run by Miguel Sano have now jumped in front 3 to 2. Kenny Vargas did not go.
foul. Vargas came up for the first time in 2014 played in 53 games and hit nine home runs and belted 38 RBIs but the next year expecting to be the everyday DH or first baseman. He reported a little bit out of shape and uh, they started him out at AAA. When they called him up to the bigs, he hit 240 with five home runs. And then last year, wound up hitting 230 with 10 home runs, but still spending time at AAA Rochester. Got the rest of your life to get big. Short time in your life to be a major leaguer. No excuse if you're out of shape. They sent Maurer and the pitch fouled off. Now it moves to two balls and two strikes. And the Twins have failed with one big slugger in the past that they gave up on. And that gentleman went to the Boston Red Sox and became a future Hall of Famer, David Ortiz. Through work. And they do not want to lose a guy like a Sano or Vargas, knowing their power potential and when it might emerge. Three and two. Oh, powerful switch hitter. Hamill wants to be a little more convicted with his fastball and try to get ahead with it and then finish him off with the excellent slider. And it looks like to me now he's throwing more sliders than fastballs. And there's a line drive base hit to left field. Maurer will stop at second base. Hamill has faced six batters in this inning and five have reached. It's too much of the plate. That ball's right center cut. Down the middle. Strike one. Jason desperately needs a ball struck to an infielder. Mike Miner starts to warm in the Kansas City bullpen as Jason Hamill's pitch count moving up. He's right now at 62 pitches, not yet through three. One ball, one strike. And Hamill. He's in his 10th year in the big leagues. He's been around. He knows exactly what it's like to pitch in both leagues. Tampa Bay to start his career. Colorado Rockies in the National League. That's tough there. Baltimore, Chicago, National League, Oakland. Back to Chicago. Oh. Able to clip the outside corner for a 1 2 count on Castro. Walk a fly out, a stolen base, a walk, a three run home run, a walk, a single. It just seems like Jason having more difficulty commanding his fastball than his secondary pitches. He's been up a lot with that fastball. You know, Dave Island would love for him to use his height at six foot six, 225, to work down in that downhill angle. Try to continue to, to you know, start to stride and work down, use the defense. He's been up a little bit too much in this inning, and his command is wavered. Tempo hasn't been that great either in this inning. He's taken a lot of time in between pitches. The next pitch will be his 30th in this inning and to get one out when when, you, when a pitcher takes a lot of time sometimes to the opposing hitters it seems that he's not confident. That's just some time uh, read of that body language in between pitches.
in there. Castro disagrees with home plate umpire Manny Gonzalez, but Hamill was able to just graze that outside corner. Well, a little bit too close to take. Castro got to go second time in a row. Called out looking. You know, you don't want to put that in the umpire's hand. You good got a job by Salvador to frame it. He made it look good. Still, if it's close like that, you got to be hacking. You got to foul it off. You got no gripe. Now time called by Perez. It'll have to be a well placed single out there to score Maurer. If it's hit straight to Alex Gordon, he's got one of the best arms in baseball here, and accuracy included. Locane in center field, he's got a good arm, but it's just tough to throw anybody out from center. And Bonifacio has a slightly a tick above average arm in right. To center field, Kane has it measured, makes the catch, but a three run home run by Miguel Sano has put the Twins in front. We'll see Moose, Kane, and Hosmer when we come back. Missouri, Micah Floyd assisted in saving the life of an accident victim. While on vacation in Washington, D.C., he witnessed a large branch fall onto the victim and a passing car. The first one on the scene, Micah assisted in removing the branch that was preventing the victim from breathing and assisted in stabilizing her until the paramedics arrived. Congratulations, Micah. You get to sit in the Buck O'Neill legacy seat. Great job, Micah. Hughes to face Mustakas, who popped up to second. Swung at the first pitch from Phil Hughes and popped it up. Royals had four hits in the second, scored twice. And there's one that rolls up the middle and is cut off by the shortstop, and Polanco will throw out Mike. And there's one out. That's a good try there. Had a lot of spin on it. Yeah, it's just just a little, little wait a little bit longer, and he'd have had a clean hit out to left. Again for Moose, that's that's another early count swing. But you got to be aggressive on Hughes. Get him before he gets you. It's your pitch. Hughes will give up a lot of home runs. He's allowed three this year. Kane looking for his first. 
and tries to dump one to right field but it stays up for Kepler and two quick outs here in the bottom half of inning number three. Celebrate Mother's Day with the Royals and enjoy some fun in the sun with the special women in your life on May 14th versus Baltimore. The first 10,000 ladies through the gates will receive a Royal Sun hat courtesy of Academy Sports and Outdoors. Visit Royals.com and area price chopper location or call 1 800 6 Royals for tickets. Here's Eric Hosmer who dumped a single left field first time up and then came around to score on Perez's double to right center. Hughes, his fastball velocity is down about two to three miles an hour from 14 to 17 now. He's kind of, you know, and he's using more cutters. Cutters, change up curves. You know, his, his fastball velocity is now his average is right around 89, 88. No longer has that mid 90s fastball. Osmer takes it low and the count goes Eric's way three and oh I wouldn't be surprised if they give him the green light if he likes it. They need base runners. There's nobody on base. Yeah but Rex he has such good opposite field power if it's his pitch middle away and that wind is roaring out to left. I don't think so. OK. He, he's got to be taken all the way. Here. And he does. You know, three and one. Make him do it again. Now you can get him at three and one. There's if there's runners on. I totally with you 100 percent. But he's telling himself if he throws me that one again. I'm going to hit it straight away. Just missed. You know the way the Royals offense is going. There shouldn't be any 3 0 swings at all unless there's runners in, on base. There shouldn't be any. They need to get on base and start, you know, trying to generate some base runners. Royals started the game last in batting, 205. Last in run score, just two and a half per game. Osmer seeing a lot of pitches in this at bat. Another good off speed pitch that tops foul. Yeah, worked a little curveball there, three and two. Oz waiting him out. Up his average to 233. Well, he continues to stay inside on Eric. The eighth pitch in this duel between Hughes and Hosmer is coming up right here. And he goes upstairs with his fastball and strikes out Eric. So the Royals done in the third. We head to the fourth inning of play, and Rosario will be leading things off.
time for our Panera around the league and here is Justin Upton with a long home run to left Tigers leading in the ninth over the White Sox seven to three we'll see the White Sox for the next four right here at Kauffman Stadium and we also heard that Abisail Garcia their terrific right fielder has gotten off to a great start this year he is leading the league and hitting at 376 and left the game with groin tightness his left side we wouldn't mind missing him Kobe. Quintana Pelfrey Holland are the four you'll see for Chicago and Vargas Duffy Carnes and Kennedy going for the Royals. Here's a chopper up the middle. Escobar won't reach it and a base hit for Eddie Rosario second straight inning that Minnesota has had their leadoff man on. He now has an 11 game hit streak. It's what you want to do stay on top of the ball. Chances of, especially if you got good speed from the left side of the plate, you're going to continue any kind of streak like that. Bounced it through. Buxton walked his first time up. This is a guy who strikes out a lot. And now he bunts. Hamill gets to it. Throw is clipped off of the body of Buxton. He is safe. And now two are on. And it is a base hit. You return to the top of the order. Two on, nobody out. Very fortunate that that ball didn't get thrown down the right field line. There's absolutely no chance on a play like this with this guy's speed. And Haas did the right thing. You just kind of stay out of the way. The only way you're you're going to get him is if you throw the ball to the second base side of the bag and give him a chance. But you know, it's yeah, hard because they're competitors. He believes he could he could have got him out there, but more damage could have been done by that. Fortunately, it stayed there. Now they're. See what they're going to do. Joe's going to do here. And Rex, you were telling me that Adam Eaton was involved in a loss for the season for the Washington Nationals with a knee injury and a play at first base. And you said Eaton has to play a little differently in the future. Yeah, if keep that from happening. If Haas knows to not get in the runner's lane. If it, but if it first, if there's a first baseman that gets in your lane and he's attempting to make the throw. Don't alter your run into the base or you'll get hurt. Just bump her up and run right through it. And that's what's going to be safe for both you and him, really. It's a big loss for Washington. It's tough, but I see, you see a lot of guys go on the disabled list there at first base like that on, on bang bang plays. <coughs> Dozier looked like he wanted to bunt. Fouled off. And there were reports when he came up for the minor leagues that. He was the best bunter in their system. But he's been a lot of rip it and rip it in the big leagues hitting home runs and he belted a career high 42 last year including 11 of those against the Royals. When he, he just had a year I mean he he, he recognized his pitch and didn't miss it. Ground ball Merrifield gets it to Escobar touches second and safe there. Oh you know. That's the one thing that all you, the way around that you got to be careful with when the, when you're shifting and moving guys like that because you you, you have to be able to get a Man. double play out of that. There's just no way around it. The, the, forget the shift. For, forget it. Look, you can just see that there's nobody over there to cover the base. And he happened to hit it in the right spot. And that's going to be rule of fielder's choice. But that's really tough. You've got to get two out of that. Our Chevy call to the bullpen comes in the fourth inning. Mike Miner. We'll be right back.
Fox Sports Go. You can stream all the games this weekend live on your phone. Download the free Fox Sports Go app and stream the Royals wherever you go. Rex, how about that last play? We're seeing so many shifts in baseball, but that kind of took the Royals out of the double play. Oh, you know what? You just got to get it out. He might shift like that, you know, and that's and that's up to you know the infield instructor and their their, their defense and how you want to play him. But it doesn't matter with nobody out. You got to get the surest out. Okay, can you see where Merrifield? You see those guys up the middle. Now the the ball's hit hard. Merrifield needs to not face that. You got Buxton, one of the fastest runners in the league. Take the out at first. Merrifield should have thrown the ball across the diamond. At least got one out of it. Here's it looks like two. They go four, six, and nope. Run does score. And it's now four to two, Minnesota. Boy, Kepler got down that line in a hurry. Sure enough, especially when he knows he has a chance to get an RBI. If you hit into a double play, you don't get an RBI. But look at that. It's, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. The ball just not hit hard enough and can't get him there either. So now they pitch to Sano with runners on first and third and one out Sano been incredibly impressive against the Royals this year with 12 RBIs first pitch fouled off. Fastball on a tee in the inner half of the plate to a powerful hitter is not a good combination. He busted it. That's our Jeep drive of the game. Sano's seventh of the year. By the way Mike Miner the new Royals pitcher the left hander delivers to Sano who slams it into left field that will drive in one more and make it five to two. This guy has been ridiculous. I mean last year Dozier had a career year against Kansas City with 11 home runs and 13 RBIs. Sano in only five games this year has 13 RBIs. To, uh, anything that's out over the plate and elevated, he's not going to miss it. And you make mistakes on a hot hitter, that's what happens. Mike Miner has a fastball loaded mid 90s slider, good changeup. And the updated number is now on Sano against the Royals. Scalding hot. Now we're 0 for 1 with the walk. Ball one. Joe has hit over 315 against the Royals in his career, but just two for his last 35. He did have a big hit yesterday, or excuse me, on Friday in that four run eighth inning. Three in the third and two so far here in the fourth. Royals at one time had a two nothing lead. There's a strike two and one. Second base, Merrifield goes Escobar one, first base, two. Double play.
by Chevy Silverado, the most dependable, longest lasting, full size pickups on the road. Find yours at your local Mid America Chevy dealer. By Panera Bread, Panera Caters for every group, every size, every meal. And by Steel Outdoor Power Equipment. Find a servicing steel dealer at steeldealers.com or search steel. Miguel Sano with four RBIs in this game. With now eight in this series, two games, and 13 this year against Kansas City. And he has been punishing the Royals. And Hughes comes with a first pitch breaking ball down to Salvador Perez. Cracked foul. Popped up, shallow right, long run for Dozier, also one for Kepler. It'll drop for a hit. Perfectly placed by Salvador Perez, who's now two for two on the afternoon. How about Dozier replacing his divot? Trevor Vance thanks you, Brian Dozier, and Salvi says, all right, I'll take it. Dozier, great effort. Nice soft landing here on the Trevor turf. Now Alex Gordon who had a great plate appearance his last time up and singled sharply to left field. There's pitch breaking ball in there strike one. Okay, Molitor wants Maurer to play off of Salvi at first base there. Get off the bag. Give yourself a little more room with the left hand hitter up there. There's no need to hold Salvi. He's not going anywhere. So you give the first baseman a little bit more room, a little more range. Nice idea. Alex wants to bottle this swing up. Outer half textbook. It's exactly what you want to do. Look at his hands. Hands go to the ball, but he waits till the ball almost gets in the catcher's glove. And then he rifles it off to left field. That's exactly what you want. Well, uh, beautiful job of waiting. And that ball was well struck. Key seeing the ball longer. In there, strike three call. Miss that one. The Royals and Fox Sports Kansas City are offering a unique way for fans across the Midwest to enjoy a game at Kauffman Stadium. It's the Raised Royal Fan Express. Fans in the designated markets will have the opportunity to win a trip to the K. Next stop is Tulsa on May 6th. Go to Royals.com slash Fan Express for more information. Hey. Hey, those young men. They look like they're enjoying the game. Some of them forgot their coats. Let's go. It's still chilly here, fellas. Bonifacio with a rope to center field. That'll drop for a hit. Salvi hustles to second base, and the Royals have two on with one out. And the tying run coming to the plate in Brandon Moss. Very nice. One thing about Bonifacio, his bat stays in the zone, the hitting zone, a long time. Look at that, nice and level. He waited for the ball to come down. It's basically a hanging breaking ball that he didn't try to do too much with. Beautiful swing. So we're seeing right now in today's game some excellent swings by these hitters 
in certain situations here. Now they just got to put it together with some more runners on base and they can get back and, and tie this game and get back in it. And then take the lead and hold it, keep the lead. Now Brandon Moss with a drive to right. Kepler is back and he'll make the catch up against the wall and the Royals runners have to retreat to the respective bases. Little bit too much to top of the ball. Good try but. Top of the baseball top spin kept it in. See on contact right there he's he's on the top of the ball and. Unfortunately for him they couldn't capitalize on that Kepler goes all the way back and with one out that's what you want to do. There's no need to tag. The runner should want to go all the way to the next base. And if he drops it then you can score. Outfielders come in a little bit in center and right. With Escobar up. Big it at bat for confidence for Esky. Escobar just three for his last 38. Never, I've never seen Esky in a, in a, a slump like this ever. And it's because he, you know he's not bunning. He's not. He's not in, giving himself any chance to come out of it. The Royals will leave two in the fourth inning and trail Minnesota five to two, going to the fifth. Top of the Royals five to two. We'll show you the double play ball. It was turned to help Miner get out of the inning. Four, six, three. And since the Royals made a McDouble play in today's game, McDouble sandwiches are only one dollar tomorrow. The McDouble play all season long at participating McDonald's in the Greater Kansas City, St. Joseph, and Lawrence locations. Miner back in did a good job. Getting out of trouble in that fourth inning came on with the bases loaded. Both runs were charged to Jason Hamill, who went three innings, gave up five runs, and Miner misses outside for a ball. Kenny Vargas, a switch hitter, now batting from the right side, and he takes inside. Mike has had three straight scoreless outings before this one including a three inning performance on April 20th at Texas. Moose takes care of Vargas one out.
Castro has struck out twice both times against Jason Hamill both times looking. Strike one. Mike with four quality pitches. He was a starter with the Atlanta Braves. It's impressive that he's still be able to get his fastball in the mid 90s. Very smooth, nice delivery, good mechanics. That's right, because last year he had those shoulder difficulties. He did not pitch at the big league level. He was shut down a couple of times because of pain in that left arm. Hello? Just outside. And that's what you were talking about with that fastball at 95 miles an hour. Yeah, he's, it's good life to it. He should, you know, use that and challenge hitters, especially when you're down like this. Don't want to give any free passes in the and that's the pitch you can command the most and use it. Back up the middle, base hit for Castro. But the season that Miner had last year, like you said, he didn't make any major league appearance. He was here most of the year until late. That's a tough year for a guy, especially when you're, you know, you're, you're not able to perform. You know, you're hurt. You're being seen. You're around everywhere, and people are like, "Who are you?" And what, what's you know? He's new to the organization. It was a tough year he endured. He's worked hard, and it's good to see him back out there on the field performing. And in the meantime, what what a player tells himself is, "Look, I'm going to make a difference in this team. It's going to take a little bit of time for me, and these people are going to know who I am, and I'm going to make them feel good about them signing me." Just like that guy is about getting the souvenir. From Jorge Polanco. Keeping it down. Merrifield to Escobar. Not in time. Miner with a little assist from his backside. How about this? A little one. Four, six. Now the lefty to face Eddie Rosario, who's one for two. He led off the fourth inning with a single, and Buxton with a bunt single. Eddie, a lot of it has to do with plate discipline. They love his swing at hitters' pitches, but he's been swinging at a lot of pitchers' pitches his first couple of seasons in the big leagues, and that's why Eddie slumped to 269 last year. And there's the off-speed pitch. Fine line between being too aggressive. And being selective. I mean, it's it's not easy. I mean, you're by nature an aggressive hacker, swinger. You know, it's hard for you to kind of lay off of those borderline pitches. And with that kind of speed, he doesn't have to hit it on the nose. He can just top it and run it out and beat it out. One ball, two strikes. Pitch by Mike Miner. Beautiful slider that drifted away, and Rosario could not resist. He strikes out. 
Merrifield Moustakis and Kane when we come back. Bottom of the fifth against Kansas City and parents. Now is your child's opportunity to be part of running a major league baseball game by entering our kids run the show contest presented by Wonder Bread and Price Chopper on Sunday July 2nd your child could spend the afternoon assisting with select game day positions such as junior team photographer K crew member TV broadcaster grounds crew and more the application deadline is May 3rd so enter now at Royals.com slash kids run the show with Merrifield with an 0 1 count shows bunt takes a strike 0 and 2 right idea Hughes by not being overpowering he's a guy that you can you know, drop a bunt down on now 0 and 2 he's not gonna any base runners Although if you want to you square early and you just walk to first base you put the ball down. So just because if you strike out I mean if you foul off the ball with two strikes on you. You know. You're out. A lot of guys are a little bit afraid to bunt but whatever any way to get on base whatever you want to do. But soft tossers guys that don't overpower breaking balls change ups you can square early and just put the ball down. Now is 63 pitches, just starting his fifth inning. That'll get out of play. Now when you throw strikes, pitch to contact, you're going to. Have a, a manageable pitch count. That's what we're seeing. Good job by Hughes. And that's the idea of pitching. You want to stay in the game longer and go deeper. If you pitch to contact, you want to get the out in the first three pitches if you can. Went to right field. Kepler back. He will run it down. Time for our sprint trivia question. Name the six Royals to have hit more home runs in the month of April than Mike Mustakis's seven. 
I mean you would think Balboni would be right up there because he has the single season record. Bonesy. I'm just guessing George Brett maybe you know just because he's the Hall of Famer and mm -hmm. Jermaine Dye hit a lot of home runs. Mike Sweeney might have gotten off yep. to a good hot start for Carlos Beltran. Moose the last two Aprils has seven home runs in each April. It's not done. Today is the last day. He hits that ball sharply, but foul. Pulled down the line. Mauer will take it. Two out. Top three batters in the Royals order are 0 for 8. Lorenzo's had a tough time after a marvelous homestand where he had 12 hits and the Royals went 5 and 3. He only had one hit on the road trip to Arlington and Chicago. Now he muscles up on that one and blasts it over the head and gone. Home run number one for Lorenzo Kane on a line drive. Oh man, nice to see. He's got a long time. You're just talking about it, Fizz. You know, he's he, he hasn't been uh, getting looking for his pitch and he waited on a breaking ball that time and that was right in the heart of the plate. It was very nice to see that homer right over the fence. I mean the ball was it didn't get much hard, taller than 30 feet off the ground much higher and it, it, it just had topspin. It's hard to hit a home run here in this ballpark with topspin. Now Hosmer taking high ball one. Eric one for two. Do you remember the mighty Quinn? Oh yeah, Mark Quinn. Oh, he had that great April, didn't he? I'm gonna I'm gonna make him. Didn't a call. he hit two home runs in his first major league game? It was in Anaheim, and I think we were broadcasting this game. And we were like, who is this guy? I, I had to go down and meet him the next day. Yeah, we called him the mighty Quinn. Uh huh. He might be one of the one of the uh, trivia answers. Three and one. Nothing going on in the Twins bullpen. And then Eric pulls one foul. We're seeing Hughes with different arm angles. I mean, he used to be basically a fastball curveball pitcher when he was with the Yankees. And now after that thoracic outlook syndrome injury, he's come back and creating pitches. Yeah, but you know what though? It just goes to show you you can be successful pitching instead of throwing. And, it's, and when you have, when you have some time in the game and you already have an idea about the, the art of pitching. Then it makes it a little bit easier to adjust to not blowing it by guys. Former first round pick out of Foothill High School in 2004 by the Yankees. Remember when he came up, a scout called him Mark Pryor Light. And Hosmer swings and misses and strikes out. 
for the second time. But Lorenzo Cain goes deep. And the Royals are now within two of the Twins. Back here at the K, how about our showstopper? It is all Anthony Rendon's show. He had five RBIs coming into the day. He has 10 in one game. Anthony Rendon, six for six, three home runs, and 10 RBIs in that contest. How do you like to go from five RBIs on the season to 15 in one day? That is a showstopper. I'll say, Joe, are you kidding? That's, wow. that's unbelievable. Why would you give a guy like that anything to hit in his last few at bats? Well, sometimes they go out of the strike zone to get him. Oh, that's you, a, you and I did a game. That's Vlad Fuego. Guerrero had nine RBIs and he was hitting 500 going into that game the last week. And Pedro Martinez was the pitcher. And Vlad Guerrero was just ripping line drive after line drive on all kinds of pitches. And the next day we went down into the clubhouse and said, Pedro, why did you keep pitching to him? And he said, I didn't. I was throwing the pitch eight inches off the plate and he was going out and smacking it off the wall. No, when you're at, when you're in a groove like that, you can hit pitches like that. But but Vladdy, you know, he did that in his sleep. One of the greatest bad ball hitters in the history of the game. Here is Buxton who's been on twice and now he takes a strike and minor runs the count full three and two you don't want to let this guy on he's very fast he walked stole a base eventually scored in the third reached on the bunt single last time up and scored now he pops it up Moose has it measured in foul territory and there's a big first out. Our University of Kansas Health System injury report Adam Eaton out for the year. Hit 297, seven doubles, 13 RBIs, 24 runs. Already with the Nationals, that is really going to hurt. Oh, man. Even though they had the big game today, scored 20 runs. Ouch. Yeah, and they, and they beat the Mets 23 or, to 5. Yeah, or it's in the ninth inning. In Game's the ninth still inning. alive. That's that's an incredible score right there. You know we need one of those games. Yeah we do. Nice 23 run game. The ball has popped up into shallow right center field. And Bonifacio can't reach it. It will go as a double. Elements of the game sometimes can factor in. Wind, sun. Looks like he's coming in now. There's a little indecision there. Yeah, and and, and you know if you're Bonifacio, you have got to take charge. Even though Merrifield's waving, 
You've got to take charge. Obviously, he called it once because Merrifield backed off it, and you got to catch that ball. And those are guys familiar with one another. They played together down in the minor league several seasons. So a runner in scoring position with one out for Max Kepler. He's been on, been on base three times. Goes after the first pitch, pops it up. Escobar wants it, says, get out of my way, and makes the catch. And Ned's going to come out and make a move here and bring in Moylan, see how Moylan can do against the hot Sano. Good job by Mike Miner in his two and two thirds innings of work. This is our Chevy call to the bullpen. Peter Moylan. Congratulations. Well, here it's five to three Minnesota over the Royals, top of the sixth inning. And we've got our trivia question and answer now. Our sprint trivia question was about home runs in the month of April. Name the six Royals to have hit more home runs in the month of April. All right. Than Mike Mustakis. Let's give seven. them names. Sweeney. I'm going to go with uh, Jermaine Dye. Okay. I'm going to go with uh, the kid uh, uh, Mark Quinn. Mark Quinn to win. And I'm going to go. With a power hitter that used to play a little third base, first base, Dean Palmer. Oh, that's a good guess. Okay, who's the next one? I'm going to go with Balboni. Uh, bye bye, Balboni. No, you know what? But back when Bye Bye was playing, they would start the uh, season later in April, so probably not. Huh. How many do we need? How many more? We need two more. Sid Sweeney. How about Bo Jackson? Bo's got to be on there. Bo Jackson. This guy's just hot in fuego right now. You get a base hit like that to right field, man. They, man, they just better put four fingers up and walk him. I, I, I'm. This guy has now 14 RBIs against Kansas City. Look at this. Now it, it, that's that's a pitch there that he really waited on. That was right down the middle. Ned was thinking that he might could sink or slider him into an out. Instead, he just drove in another run. Well, we will answer the question when we come back. Jermaine Dye.
a candidate. No. No, he's not there. There's we Jermaine got them all. Dye. We got him. We got them all. All right. Okay. The Bruce. guys were shaking their heads like we didn't get them all. That's all right. Look, that's a lot of ex Royals and some really good ones there. And Moose needs one more to get in that category. Matt Strom coming out of the bullpen will face Joe Maurer and first pitch is upstairs ball one. Strom in his seventh game this year had a very rough start against the Twins in the first series this year. Sent out, spent about a week and a half down in the minor leagues. There's a strike one and one. But Miguel Sano has been a one man wrecking ball against Kansas City pitching this year. He has driven in five of the team's six runs today, and he drove in four of the six on Friday. Strom's got a big fastball, 90 to 95. Might have a little 96 in him at times. Nice little slider changeup combination. This is only the fifth game. We got 14 more to go. This guy already has 14 RBIs. I mean, it's almost like Hosmer against what was it? The White Sox last year had 23 oh. RBIs. Mm. Fouled off. <laughs> Runner goes, pitches fouled off. How about that? Now they're running the big guy. Nothing wrong with that either, by the way. Paul Molitor remembering that 0 and 9 start the Minnesota Twins had to start their season last year, and he remembers the beatdown the Royals put on his team, and now he's saying, "All right, pedal to the metal." But goes around, comes around. Kansas City won 15 of 19 last year versus the Twins, and were 9 and 1 at Kauffman Stadium. Outside corner right there and Strom strikes out Joe Maurer who debates the call but twins score a run and now include their lead to six to three. This is our Sonic Slam inning, and our contestant is Michael Pope 
from Kansas City Missouri if the Royals hit a home run out of the park in this inning Michael will win thirteen hundred dollars but if the Royals hit a grand slam out of the yard Michael will win twenty five grand from Sonic and the Royals I wonder if Michael is any relation to John Pope who you see charge across the diamond in those brightly colored orange or yellow shoes he's our cameraman does a great job he's a fine athlete too by the way yeah Salvador Perez with a shot to the alley he ain't catching that that one. will get to the wall and Salvi with his third hit of this day two doubles and a single good for Salvi work on that B.A. that batting average at 247 coming in and that's a, a breaking ball stayed up it ended up being out over the plate, but Salvi's, you know, again, using those long arms and bat. And he didn't even hit that on the barrel either. He hit that off the end of the bat, but it was well placed. And to keep it away from the speedy Buxton out there in the center. Very nice. Phil Hughes at 77 pitches. He went six in his last game. Gordon fouls it off. Ryan Presley started to warm up in the Twins bullpen. Well, Kane got his first home run of the year in the fifth inning. Gordon looking for his first. Why not now? Alex single to left field and struck out. He is due, Fizz. <laughs> Ryan Dozier will make the catch. Now Hughes to face the rookie Bonifacio. Jorge slowly making his way up in the Royals minor league system signed in 2009 at the age of 16. He was telling me the other day he remembers that moment like it was yesterday and he remembers that at the tryout last tryout Dayton Moore and Rene Francisco and the Royals were there. He was excited to sign with Kansas City. And that's got to be tough. I'm 16 years old. Mm -hmm. I mean, you were 18 when you were signed. 17. 17? That's right. I was a young senior. I'll say. Yep. But you know what, though? If you, if you have good hand-eye coordination, if you have something in your game that's exceptional, you can compete with the college graduates at a young age like that. And I held my own. I hit, I hit 285 my first half season. And this is all against all, you know, guys that are a lot older. But I could run. I had good speed. Bonifacio, he has talent. He can hit. He's got excellent hand eye coordination. Ground ball in the hole. So no has it. Holes Perez. And then throws out Bonifacio. Two out. You know, Sano, last year they started him in right field. And, and you know, you, in order to be an accomplished big leaguer and a, a guy who can play, you got to let the defense side of the game go. They played him in right field. Watch him here. He okay, taps his glove, gets his feet in order, makes a nice throw over there. Right field was not his position, and he looked lost out there. Now he's at third base this year. They got rid of uh, Trevor Plouffe, who's their third baseman. And, and coincidingly, he... He's working both ends. He's doing a great job, and it's transferred into his hitting now. Yeah, he moved from the position he was familiar with at third base to right field. As you said, that was a struggle, so they moved him back to the position that he felt most comfortable. Even when he was growing up, he was a shortstop, a big shortstop, but, it, but he showed good hands. Salvador yeah. Perez, matter of fact, in Venezuela on a lot of the travel ball teams was the team's shortstop. 
Yeah, let's see, he's a lot more comfortable now. He's see, he's got a nice little fielding percentage here. You know, you're going to make a lot of errors on the left side of the diamond. Usually, the guys with the most errors on the team are the third base and the shortstop. Well, here is Moss, who almost drove one out last time up, sending Kepler back to the fence in right. Check swing right on his hands. That hurt. He singled his first time up, drove in his seventh. Fizz, is there such a word as coincidingly I used? I speak on. HUD. Yes, there okay. is. Hey, right, look, uh, you know what I meant, though. Yes. Uh, you know, it's somewhere in between there. Oh, and two. Brandon with a base hit to right field. Salvador Perez will be held. Again, he's on top of it. That's twice he's hit the ball hard. Once he, Kepler caught it in right field. This one fell in front. But look at Jersey at the bottom of your screen down here. Jersey saying, you know, uh, Salvi, let's let's just hold it right there. So we got know there's two outs. You know we're down by three runs. So he played it safe. And after Molitor had the conversation with Phil Hughes, I thought he might lift him, but now he's staying with him. He wants Hughes to face the right-handed Escobar. Hughes has gotten Esky out twice with a pop-up and ground out. Low ball one. It's a great idea. I was just going to say that the Sano is playing almost in the cut of the grass back there. Now he that brought him back in. Now he's he's at least even with the back. But still, you know, Escobar he, he could drop a bunt down and beat it out. But you know, the way he's going, you know, three for his last 38. Um, anything, anything to try to get that run home. Oh. One ball, one strike. They moved Escobar from the seven spot to the nine and Ned Yo said we're not tweaking the lineup. We're just trying to put our guys who are hot at the top of the lineup to give them more at bats. And Bonifacio who was nine hitting seventh today. Hold to the left side base hit Perez will score and Escobar breaks that drought. Just his third RBI this year. Hey, there you go. Way to find a hole. Get a little bit of luck now. Molitor saying, all right, that's enough for Hughes. Breaking ball, middle of the plate. Found a hole. Nice job. So Ryan Presley will come out of the bullpen to face the top of the order, and Whit Merrifield will be right back.
Parents sign your kids up for Slugger's Blue Crew to get your little ones all geared up for the baseball season. This year's membership includes a Blue Crew jersey, flat bill cap, special edition earbuds, Royals Eye Black, two home game ticket vouchers, and much more. Membership is just $30. Join now for visiting by visiting Royals.com slash Blue Crew. With Merrifield with two on, two out. Presley, the new pitcher. Outside, ball one. And Ryan, a veteran. 6'3 right hander, 27 years old, out of Dallas, Texas. He's pitched very well recently against Kansas City. Last nine outings has not allowed a run. In the air. Center field, Buxton. That'll do it. But a big two out base hit by Escobar draws the Royals to within two. And we'll be right back. Academy Sports and Outdoors, official sporting goods retailer of the Kansas City Royals, and by Ram Trucks. Guts, glory, Ram. Now, CDs Escobar came through with the two out base hit in the sixth inning. We're in the top of the seventh inning. Kenny Vargas is the batter who is singled. It's also popped up twice. And Strom gets a strike across. Matt tossed a season high one and a third scoreless frames on Friday. Fouled off. And he retired all four hitters he faced. Came on to end the sixth for the Twins by striking out Joe Maurer. Missed by much. I think Matt thought it was strike three. Boy, that looks pretty good. Sure does, but you nothing know, you can do about it. Just get back up on that slab and throw another one in there. Keep it down. Pretty good catch by the ball boy of the netting. He's got skills. Rip on that fastball thrown by Matt. Twins with three in the third, two in the fourth, one in the sixth. The Royals with two in the second, one in the fifth, one in the sixth. And 
that time took a little bit off through that breaking ball down and Bruce able to dig it out and throw out Vargas. Let's go to Joel. Well guys we've told you about Noah's bandage project in honor of the late Noah Wilson who was collecting band-aids for kids that were in the hospital before he lost his life to cancer. How about this yesterday the Noah's Crown Town 5K had a chance to be out there Danny Duffy and Eric Hosmer on hand great event raised a lot of money and those two superstars Danny Duffy and Eric Hosmer who are so involved it began with Haas and his relationship with Noah so involved with this charity and the Wilson family. But here guys is what's most impressive. The Royals are in a tough stretch right now. We know that they're at the ballpark late Friday night. Those two superstars and they are superstars in this town in this community and on the field were there at 645 yesterday morning to take part to sign autographs to support that charity 645 on a rain. cold rainy morning the community showed up to support it and so did those two superstars but there aren't a lot of guys around the major leagues or professional sports that are going to wake up that early after a late night job and those two did it absolutely not Joel but great great report there and thank you for acknowledging the the giving the big hearts uh, these guys have for others and in, the, in their community this is exactly what an organization wants your your premium star players showing up in the morning like that which is unbelievable in baseball a Friday night game you know you're done 11 12 o'clock you get home late you you know and it's raining you know how you want to stay in bed when it rains fizz well and thanks to Joel and Susan Goldberg who after the game ended Joel has to stay here with Monte and finish up the uh, post game no no he gets to. He didn't have to. Okay. Well, he gets to. It's all about the attitude. But he didn't attitude. have to show up on Saturday morning. But he did. No, but he he's a gamer. Even though Ellie has a broken arm. Ellie, get well soon. Your dad loves you. She is. He's beautiful. No, oh, that's amazing. Way to go, guys. Right at Kane, who barely has to move, and Lorenzo makes the catch. We'll keep it here because we want to listen to the singing of God Bless America. But boy, has Strom been sharp in his the four batters that he's faced? He's gotten oh, all four and struck out a couple. Moly, Strom Moly. He's back. I like it. Important part of the Royals' bullpen, and if need be, he mm -hmm. can start. See if these young men can carry a tune out in the field now. It's Boy Please Scout join us Day in singing. The K. God bless America. Hey, now don't be nervous. By Eagle Scouts, Sen Boswell and Daniel Duffy, and signing by Eagle Scout Zachary Smith. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her. Through the night with the light from above, from the mountains to the prairies, to the oceans white with foam, God bless America, my home sweet home. America, my home, sweet home.
summary that Sano would be right in the middle of this. I mean, it, it, three for four, five RBIs, hits his seventh homer. You can't pitch to him anymore. Just, just pitch around him. He's in fuego. Look at that base hit to the opposite field, too. When you're going good, you're seeing the ball. He certainly is. Raking against the Royals. And now 29-year-old left-hander Taylor Rogers. Paul Molitor has three lefties in that bullpen. And Taylor Rogers, Craig Breslow, and Buddy Boshears. But they wanted to bring on Rogers here because the Royals have Moustakis and Hosmer coming up this inning. That's a little fastball he's going to throw. Low 90s. He's got a couple of speeds to his curve. Change up to right handers. No one up in the Minnesota bullpen. And Mike goes after the 2 0. Good backhanded pick by Maurer. One out. Maurer, he's, he's been all over the ball defensively. He's been really good. First game on Friday night, he made three or four nice defensive plays. That backhand there was. Was just kind of an in between hop and see how he stayed down, went to the knee, went to one knee, stayed down with it, and, and have it, had his gloves start at the ground level and then pull it up. Taking a page out of Gold Glover Eric Hosmer's book. Now, Kane, who lined a home run over the left field wall, his first of the year this season, one for three. Take a look at this top spin homer first of the season man it's hard to hit a home run here at the K with backspin but he did it with top spin on the line I mean to tell you incoming for the cameraman out there be careful the ball was screaming Mike Meyer out there be careful Chuck and Duck Mike oh. one and one. There's Mike trying to hide from everybody. There it is. Now he's, he's got to be able to, to, to see that incoming. And he didn't have long. That ball took about three seconds. It was out of the yard. He's got but the winter clothes oh. on his camera. Okay, now watch this now. Now, now Mikey, he, I don't think he's seen it yet, but watch, he's now at the last minute he's ducking. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is not his first rodeo. Kane back of the middle Buxton though it'll uh, hang up for him. Lorenzo lines out two down. Wouldn't you know it but nice to see Lorenzo Kane. Starting to hit that ball hard like he can. Squaring it up. Last season, Rogers ranked fifth among American League rookies in games. So first among left-handers in batting average, right around 200. First pitch to Hosmer inside ball one. Lefties batted just 202, 17 hits, 84 at bats. One and one. To second base in Dozier. Rogers, good job. You head to the eighth inning of play. Minnesota by two.
limited baseball break. Ian Desmond activated from the DL today. He signed that big $70 million deal in the offseason. Brantley out with a shoulder injury last year for much of the year, hitting 308 with five home runs in his first 20. And Dallas Keuchel, the first pitcher in the majors to reach five wins. He was fantastic against Oakland today and Houston. Boy, they are looking good. As they're in first place in the American League West now with a record of 16 and 9. And Scott Alexander comes out of that Royals bullpen pitching in game number seven. He has really looked sharp this year. He's been outstanding, Viz. But you know, I'm happy for the Rockies and Buddy Black, you know, getting his first opportunity uh, over there in Colorado to be their, their skipper. You know, Desmond coming back. They're in first place by a game over Arizona. This is an interesting year so far. Former Royal Greg Holland, 10 saves already. Yeah, a lot of forecasters picking the Dodgers to win that National League West, and several of them picking them to win the World Series. They had a remarkable win last night. Down by three, hit back to back to back home runs to tie it, and then an error won it. Perhaps that fortune will smile on the Royals today. Here is Rosario. Got to hold him down right there. Yeah, because right now the Royals have them in a situation where they need to get just one on to bring the tying run to the plate. Alexander has been doing an outstanding job, like you said, Fizz, and he's going to elevate himself to a more prominent role if he keeps throwing that sinker slider like he has been. 88 to 94, he's got some good velocity, but to me, he's better at the low 90s. He gets more sink, slider, change up, ground ball specialist. I remember, though, on Friday, he threw a 92 mile an hour sinker that had a really terrific drop. God, you know, I've got a lot of guys hitting him off the end of the bat. That's what you want. There's the slider. Who had the heaviest sinker that you can remember that you faced? I believe Scott Erickson of the Minnesota I, Twins. Okay. He had that one big year. Yeah, he did. And believe me, when I hit out, I hit that ball off the end of my bat, it felt like I was hitting a, a shot put. What was Derek Lowe like? I don't know if I ever uh, got to face oh, him. I thought you did. Nah, by that time in my career, Fizz, they'd already found me out. They knew I couldn't hit a lick off a right-hander. So then I just only faced lefties. I was a platoon player. Well, Erickson was a right-hander. Well, that, that was, was before you found they found you out. That's before they found me out. <laughs> I tricked him for a while. Left side Escobar. <laughs> One down. Yep, you know another thing that's key for Alexander and what he does well so well is when you're a ground ball guy, you want your infielders on their toes, so you don't take much time in between pitches. You get right up there and fire that ball and get up back on that slab again. There's another right one. to Escobar. Uh -oh. He bobbles, throws, and they get Buxton by a half step. Very nice. You talk about that a lot, particularly on hot afternoons where when guys take too much time, it does not help the fielders out along and then they get flat footed. Right. And, and, and you know, they, they kind of daydream. Next thing you know, oh, here it comes. So it just it's just helpful. Now, now these are big leaguers. They're not going to totally lose focus and daydream out there, but it really helps playing behind a guy that gets the ball and throws within 10, 15 seconds. Mark Burley was the fastest we've seen work. We just get it, get the sign, and here it comes. Yeah, they made sure to pitch him on getaway days. Yeah. He had a one hour and 52 minute game once. Crazy. Dozier, the batter. Royals held him in check until his last at bat when he doubled to right. Strike in there. One for nine in this series. 
Rose working him away. And Alexander gets right back in the count at two and two. Hard. The thing about a sinker baller is, is you know, you every hitter wants to pick up the release point of the pitcher that delivers the ball. But you know the, the sinker, it's a fastball and it looks really good when it leaves his hand. But by the time it gets to home plate, it's that the knees are below and you hit the top of it. Uh, he left that one up. And Dozier wanted to wants that one back. Yeah, Brian not in a group good groove yet. He's hitting 233 and that hit he had was the one that dumped into right field that he legged out for two bases. That one got away. Off the plate. No chance for anybody. Yep, there's no chance. You know, those are going to smile on that. Say, I'll take it. You better believe you will. No chance for Alexander with the angle he's going to, to catch and throw. But what's good is there was no collision. And it's okay if there's no play. Just let it go. And it had that spin on it. And when it hit, bounced, and kicked towards the dugout, and there's no chance for Moose. You can't do anything about those. Now, lefty lefty matchup facing Max Kepler, who's been on three times. Single walk, fielder's choice. He's also popped up. And being a sinker ball pitcher, you're going to give up a hit like that once in a while. This young man, great story. Born in Berlin. His name is Maximilian Kepler Rosicki. His parents were professional ballerinas. Unbelievable. That's outstanding. American Caffey. Love that story. And he became a baseball player. Hey. Boy, dad must have been a big man because Maximilian sure is. Can't imagine. Uh, I didn't know there were big, tall. Ballerinas. You know, if you're going to be a, a ballerina, mm -hmm. you that's a lot of work and a lot of stress on your body. Did you see the ballerina throw out the first pitch of the Nationals game? Oh, it yeah. was awesome. It was unbelievable. You have to have some kind of discipline. I sat next to a. I like her. I just liked her artistry of the way she went to home plate and then lobbed the baseball at the end and the catcher was so fumbled he, he, he dropped it. Yeah. Talk about deception. Yeah. She deceived the heck out of him. <laughs> she might. That make was a, a change up she threw yeah, you she know. She might could make a living. Anyway I sat next to a ballerina on the airplane on an airplane not long ago and she was she was young. She told me she had so many hip problems and knee problems and ankles and I said really you're so young. She goes I started when I was five years old. It's tough, tough sport, man. Well, they walk Kepler, and now they've got to face Sano. And man, oh man, they didn't want to do this. Sano has been a monster against the Royals. We told you he has driven in nine runs in two games of this series. He has driven in 14 runs in five games against Kansas City this year. Up. So, do you let your ego get in the way here, or do you just put him on, blow him up, face Mauer? Well, I did a game years ago where Buck Showalter walked Barry Bonds with the bases loaded, walked intentionally him walked him. Well, look, one's better than four. And then now here, you know, you take your chances with Alexander. Keep it down. Maybe he hits it at somebody. Just like that, almost foul. And in that game, Rex, it was the ninth inning in San Francisco. The Giants, the Diamondbacks, excuse me, led by two runs. They walked Bonds, which walked in a run, made it a one run game. The next batter, Brent Main, hit a smoke to line drive to right center field that the right fielder had to dive and make the catch, and the game was over. Yep. But it could have gone the other way. Mm. That's. Uh... Made a lot for the coffee table the next morning around. You know, did you see what he did? So no, still wearing sunglasses, even though 
cloud cover. Who cuts the glare down? Well, yeah, he hasn't done too badly. No, leave him on. And, you know, hitters are superstitious when they're going bad and when they're going good. Three for four today, home run, single, single. One ball, two strikes. They stay away and stay with the sinker and strike him out. Out of way. Salvador Perez will lead things off for Kansas City. And Gordon Bonifacio. Here at the bottom of the eighth inning at the K, Salvador Perez having a day. That might be his best hit day of the season. It's young this season. Now that opposite field doubles his first time up, set up everything else. Now this one here, he says, well, I'll take it. It was a little doinker, but it don't matter. Salvador then he belted one gap to gap. He's gone right center, left center, a doinker, and he's got a chance here. How about if he gets the team closer with a, a solo shot? Matt Belial will be the pitcher. Matt came on Friday and pitched two thirds of an inning, gave up a hit, but no runs. Salvi swings and sends it in the air. Buxton, about 15 20 from the warning track, will make the catch. Perez is the first out. It's a long way out there in that direction. Good swing. Well, I'll 89 to 92 with a sinking fastball that that last one didn't sink very much slider changeup. Well, Lyle starts the day with a six and a half ERA and that's mainly because of the game he had against Texas on Wednesday when he gave up five runs only got two outs. Gave up a home run. Gordon one for three. Ball one. Well, Lyle picked up from Washington last year where he posted a career best ERA 1.76. Broken bat. But Buxton is able to get there on time. Two out. That's a little buzzsaw sinker there. Wow, that just split it right down the middle. Yeah, a lot of pieces there. Second broken bat of the afternoon for Alex. 
But that first base hit, Fizz, I hope that, that he can build off of that that he got. That, that was very nice. Stayed inside of the ball, rifled a shot to left center. That's what you build on. Bonnie Pasio, one for three, single back in the fourth. And his brother both making it to the major leagues. I asked him the other day, I said, you know, obviously you come from a baseball family. Did your dad play? And he said, you know, my dad just loved the game, but no, he didn't. He was a manager of a supermarket. But he encouraged us, coached us a little bit. There's nothing wrong with that either, you know. People got to eat. Shoot, yeah, you better believe that. I wouldn't mind managing a price chopper around here someday. I love that store. I get to shop all the time here. So no backhands. And just does get Bonifacio, and the Royals are done in the eighth. Good arm. Showed it off. Seventh inning, Wellington Castillo comes through, and the Birds beat the Yankees at Yankee Stadium, seven to four. Both teams now 15 and eight. They lead. They're tied for the American League East lead. Boston behind coming into the day at 12 and 11, and the Red Sox today go in the night game with the Cubs against the Boston Red Sox and uh, then we've got the other scores all around baseball as Kelvin Herrera now comes in the game for Kansas City pitching in his ninth game this year. Got some nice numbers there two two five and he continues to move them on down. Let's give up give up two home runs in the first week of the season and that kind of. Put his ERA a little bit higher than he normally is. He hasn't had many save opportunities with the Royals starting so slowly at seven and fifteen. Oh, it's last strike one. His last opportunity was the 24th, I believe. He has not pitched since Monday in Chicago, working around a leadoff walk for a scoreless eighth inning in a non-safe situation. Worked that fastball upper 90s change up 88 to 90. Occasional sliders. Tester. Alex oh, gets man. there just in time. He had a good jump. Well, Mauer, you know what? 
Maurer needs to take Alex Gordon out for a steak dinner. I mean, he's Gordon has robbed Maurer over the last five years, probably 15 to 20 times. That ball was slicing, heading for that corner. There's no way you get to it. Plays it perfectly. Right before he ran out of room. Oh, excellent read. And Gordon says he never gives up on a ball down that left field line, even though it looks like it might go in the stands because he said the wind will swirl here in this bowl. And even though it might be blowing out towards left, it'll hook around and push uh, a baseball that looks like it's going to go into the left field stands in foul territory. And uh, he'll right, go right up against that wall and make the catch. Vargas goes after a changeup and misses. One ball, one strike. Kenny Vargas, one for four, single back in the third. Another changeup and a beauty. Royals will have the bottom of the order coming up in the ninth. Moss Escobar and then they'll turn it over to Merrifield Moose and Kane. Royals have nothing but right handers on the bench. Tributera, Chesler Cuthbert, Bartolo Colon and uh, Christian Colon. Looking at some of the future pitchers in the National League will be going later this week. And there's Brandon Kinsler, who is the new closer for Minnesota this year. Glenn Perkins still on the disabled list. Up the middle, base hit. I'll take that little broken bat, base hit up the middle off the end. Six runs on 12 hits now for Minnesota. Four runs on 10 hits for the Royals. And they're going to take Vargas out and bring on the speedy Santana. Try and get him into scoring position. Time Castro is up. He's one for four with three strikeouts. Santana goes immediately. Salvi's throw not in time. Herrera, he doesn't pay any mind to, to base runners. And whenever you come in to pinch run against a closer, you can get a good lead and take off. Because most closers, unless the game's really close, they don't care about the runner. They focus on the hitter. So he got a good jump, had a big lead. speed there at 90 miles an hour. I mean he went from 98 to 90. And that's how he does it by placing the ball in the back three fingers and same arm swing and arm speed as a fastball and gets that result. And usually when it's placed where it has to be against the lefty it's down and away it results in a swing and miss. Hold to the right side easy play for wit. Moving to third Santana but two out. Polanco will bat from the left side and Jorge today one for four. One for eight in this series. Moose. Oh, get 
gets away and a run's going to score. Excellent try though. Moose made the right decision again. He loves coming in on the ball uh, and being aggressive and he's so good at picking that short hop. If you wait back you know you got to get the long hop. Sometimes that ball will eat you up. But look at him he comes right in picks it. Now he's going his momentum is going towards the the first base uh, third base dugout. Now watch how he kind of gets going towards first and Hosmer usually digs but when that ball bounces on the lip of the grass like that that's a tough read. Yeah, it stayed down. Yeah it's tough. I think I can give him a single and an air on that. Because he can run. And it was a topper. Good try. Haas, you know, he's great at, at starting low and finishing up high with his glove position. But when it hits the lip, you never know, and it just stayed down. And Santana scored from third. Now it's a three run lead for the Twins. Oh. Okay, there's there's that sign again. We saw it once earlier in the game, and there's Manny Gonzalez with that that foul tip sign again. Herrera strikes out Rosario, but an error scores a run. We come back. Brandon Moss, Cedis Escobar, and then the top of the order. Of the ninth inning, Brandon Moss to lead things off. Our Boulevard Royals live with Jolan Monte will be next after the ball game. Salvi seems to be swinging it well again. He had three hits today, and uh, Scott Alexander very strong. So is uh, Matt Strom out of the bullpen and Mike Miner out of the pen. But Minnesota playing darn near perfect baseball against Kansas City. In the first five games this year, and here comes Brandon Kinsler, who does not have an ERA, and he has six saves and six opportunities this year. Time to give him one. That's right. He's a guy who took a long time to get at the big leagues, but he made it, and his story is a fascinating one, as he'll face Moss to lead things off. Sinker slider changeup his three pitches. 80% sinkers. That's a ball that starts right there and ends up down the ground. Moss is two for three today. Kinsler, a guy who grew up in Las Vegas, then went to Pasadena Community College and on to Dixie State. He played independent baseball. Moss fouls it off and when he was playing independent baseball from what I understand he helped the team sell tickets 
He worked as the manager of a Cold Stone Creamery. That was just to make ends meet. Now at the age of 32, he is the Twins closer. Good for him. Yeah, no more ice cream. No, no. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that now, but I'm just saying if he'd much prefer a big league starter's job. Moss to left center. Rosario will pull it down. He's seen some better results for Brandon Moss. He's starting to make some more contact and hard contact. Escobar had a good hit in the sixth inning with two out. Knocked in Perez. Orioles need to get two on to bring that tying run to the plate. Just does graze the inside corner. Everything he throws moves. Nothing straight. No, and you know that's what got him the prom promotion to the being the closer. Is that he, he's missing when he misses. He misses down. That's what you want, especially to finish off the game. That's the result you get. Ground ball. Two outs. Merrifield today 0 for 4 all four times flying out twice to right twice to center. Ball one. Taking a strike. Merrifield deep left field and that ball is gone. Boy man I'll tell you what you know he kept his hand his bottom hand inside of that line shot beautifully and like I said you know you know it can go around so long without having an ERA and there's nothing wrong with that pitch Kinsler can go back and look at that that's just fine hitting by Whitley balls down and in and he hit it off the pole beautiful stroke now the lefty Moustakis Whitley's second of the year his first one he hit here in the bullpen in right field. Today, 0 for 4. Came 
came in with an 11 game streak against the Twins. And in that 11 game streak, he hit four home runs. Get out of play, and the count will move to two balls and two strikes. Back up the middle, off oh, Kinsler, and Moustakis will beat it out. All right. Got a little action here, Fizz. Got the tying run coming to the plate. Okay. Low Kane coming up, too, and he's hit the ball hard his last two times. Watch Moose here now. Good, good approach there. Just trying to fight it off, do something. Kinsler with a clank. I mean, that, that was right in his glove. And he hit the heel of it. And... I'm thinking they're going to give Moose a hit. And they did. They did. Good for him. Now, Locaine, like I said, he, he hit his first one home run earlier in the fifth inning. It was a bolt, too. I mean, a liner, a line shot. Top spin on it. And then, then his last time up, he hit a line drive to center fielder. Buxton, right on the line. Let's see if he can get one up again, tie this baby up. Champ begins. Let's go, Royals. Crowd of 32,000 at the start of this game. With two out, nobody on Merrifield. Homered. Mustakis reached on the infield hit. Lorenzo takes a strike now, down in the count, 0 and 2. Just barely got a piece of it. Still hopeful. Yeah, young fans love it, man. They're into it. Rally caps on. Kinsler thought he had strike three as he tried to get that sinker on the outside corner. Came back but missed. Ooh man, that had a little bit of a little bit of hair on it, that's for sure. Strike three. Game over, and the Royals' losing streak has reached nine in a row. Our Honda player of the game is that young man, Miguel Sano, who had an incredible series, driving in nine runs. And he had five RBIs today, including this three run home run that gave the Twins a lead, and they would not look back. We'll be right back.